Welcome everyone to Fielding Graduate University's 47th anniversary celebration. So pleased to see and see people coming into the webinar today. So we chose in March 11th, 1974 as the beginning of Fielding. Fielding obviously has a long tail like all things. Our origin story starts with conversations. It starts with an idea uh, from our visionary founders, uh, particularly Frederick Hudson, who really had this concept that graduate education needed to be radicalized, it needed to be different, and that adult learners particularly were looking for something new and something different. Founded on the edge of a progressive movement in graduate education, I think we still live into that vision every day. And these next 47 minutes, we will we will talk a little bit about that and we will celebrate that. So I just want to, again, thank you all for being here today, for checking in. And with that, I'm going to start our 47 minutes together. First, uh, just to let you know, we're going to welcome some folks and I'm going to share some testimonials. I want to thank those of you in advance who had an opportunity to send us some things in writing, some stories about fielding throughout the month of March. We're going to share those stories throughout social media and blogs and other forms of communication. But first, I want to introduce our provost, Monique Snowden. Uh, Monique has been the provost and senior vice president at Fielding Graduate University for a couple of years now, but she has joined Fielding in 2009. And before she did that, she was the associate provost, or when she first joined us, she was the associate provost for enrollment management She's also held a number of senior administrative positions at Northwestern University and Texas A&M University. Uh, currently at for Fielding, uh, what the provost does is provide strategic leadership and support for the university in the application of strategic planning. She is also, of course, the lead of our academic domain. And so many of you know our provost and it is a pleasure to have you here with us today. So Provost Snowden. Thank you, President Rogers. And I wanna welcome you, particularly on behalf of our faculty, um, to this moment of reflection on Fielding's cherished past and hope for our glorious future. Fielding has and continues to mature. The Median age of our students today is 43. Three quarters are women, slightly over half identify in non-white racial classification. Founded in 1974, Fielding Personified is a Western Generation X institution. Born between 1965 and 1980, our Fielding generation is sometimes referred to as a micro generation between the baby boomers of 1946 through 64 and the millennials in Generation Y of 81 through 86. In Fielding's up and coming, the shifting social values were shaped by post-integration after racist Jim Crow laws. In popular culture, Alec Haley's roots in 1976 novel and 1977 television miniseries was a turning point in US race relations. Internationally, this was the era of the last Soviet children as communism fell and Russia emerged. In France, there was a notable educational reform. And in the UK, the generation dubbed Thatcher's children were thrust into social flux and transformation. And lastly, in South Africa, Generation Xers came to age in the midst of the hyper-politicized final years of the apartheid. In the United States, the landmark Civil Rights Act of 1964 began to take hold in terms of outlawing discrimination in various aspects of daily life. Title IX in 1972 prohibited sex discrimination in education programs and for those who were actively receiving financial aid assistance. And then distinctions between home and work and life became more prominent. And balance between the two, a foci, as women became more visible in different contexts, including graduate education. As we draw closer to Fielding's 50th anniversary, let us ask ourselves, what responsibility do we bear for best ensuring that the Fielding generations that follow us benefit from our lived experience of embracing an innovative and counterculture ethos? fighting for equality, justice, and peace have been hallmarks of our personified institutional life enacted by our alumni, students, faculty, and staff. So we look forward today to hearing from individuals about our past 
and hopefully looking forward to our future. Thank you, Provost Snowden. Uh, I think those are very important remarks to contextualize our, our particular kind and of graduate education and our thinking around uh, how graduate education can manifest in the lives of all of our community members, our faculty, our students, and our graduates. I wanted to turn to share just a few testimonials. People have been writing in all month as we, as I pointed, said at the beginning. And I thought a few, I just pulled a few out today. They are not attributed, uh, but some of you may be on the call. And uh, for those of you who also sent in stories and testimonials or comments, if you'd like to make any in the chat, please do so, because we will preserve this chat and we may draw out some, some thoughts during the month to share with others. Right, I'll start with Charles McClintock, our Dean Emeritus. Uh, he says, the mystique that first drew me to Fielding's founding principles eventually led me from Cornell to Fielding's door in 2001 as a Dean. And I, I know uh, Charles is on the call this morning, so welcome. For 20 years, I've witnessed firsthand the magic that is infused among faculty and students when Fielding turns the process of student-centered grad graduate education into the reality of joyful and transformed scholar practitioner graduates. And this mystique lives on. This is a particularly nice quote around the transformed scholar practitioner graduates. We can see this in our work with their Institute of Social Innovation fellows and with other uh, graduates around the institution, alumni who come back to the institution quite frequently to join us for ongoing lifelong learning opportunities. Uh, from Shushma Sharma, my experience as a trustee on the board is exceptional. Uh, the, the humanity, the friendly approach, the meetings took care of diversity without compromising equality, and the concern and care for students and faculty was very deep rooted. Uh, Shushma, I think I know you were trying to join us today from your home in India, and if you are here, welcome. From Barclay Hudson, many of you know, was a faculty, beloved faculty member in our organization development leadership master's program. I love this story. I remember one spring evening around the year 2000 going down to the beach with a dozen students who were graduating that weekend. And as the sun went down into the ocean, we took turns speaking about what we'd learned at Fielding that was unexpected or powerful. And some were in tears. And I think it was Julia Kopel who said, what I learned most was finding my voice. And I realized that voice was yours. It came from being with you. It was our voice. So it's just this notion of this collective learning and what we can learn together and who we are together as well as individually in our own power. From Sherry Hatcher, faculty uh, in, the, in the School of Clinical Psychology, our doctoral program, our oldest program and our largest program, and also a former trustee. I recall a time when one of my doctoral students acted surprised when I referenced that I was her faculty advisor, even though I've been mentoring her for several years. When I asked in puzzlement what she thought my role was, she said, I think of you as my person. That incident embodies the kind of meaningful relationships that so many of our faculty have with their students and others in the community. I think that's very powerful. And it's those day-to-day -day interactions. And Sherry, if you're on the call this morning, welcome. And then finally from Stan Hatch, former trustee in the early days, chair of our board, and some of you who've been with Fielding a long time may remember him. He said, I was honored to be part of such a forward thinking, innovative organization. But what I discovered in the years that followed was that the people, the faculty, the staff and the students were even more impressive than the innovative technology. And he had been with us in the early days when we were a, a very early adopter of using technology uh, for our distributed learning model. These are just a few of the powerful words that we've been we've been gathering these last uh, month or so uh, as we celebrate um, our anniversary this March. Now I'd like to turn and introduce Pam McLean. Uh, Dr. Pam McLean is a dear friend of Fielding. She is the uh, she is the spouse of our founder Frederick Hudson, uh, one of our founders. We claim many parents. Uh, but we are just so delighted to have you here with us, Pam. Pam is also the CEO and the co-founder with her spouse, Frederick Hudson, of the Hudson Institute for Coaching, which is an organization 
with over 40 years of history and is well known as a leading coach training institute and has a, a real shared um, set of values that are very similar for fielding, very founded, founded on the same set of values. And it is just a delightful delight to have you with us today, Pam, and thank you. So I wanted to, uh, first of all, give you an opportunity to say hello to everyone on the call. Yeah, so great to be here with you and amazing to be celebrating 47 years. What a, what a remarkable and important contribution to, uh, to the world. I, uh, I'm just uh, pleased to be able to join you in this celebration. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's good to see you um, as well today. And I appreciate you. I know you're in California, so you're up early uh, this morning. And I appreciate all of those who, who got up early for this call. Uh, Pam, I wanted to just ask you, because you've known fielding since it was a baby, and, and clearly because of your, uh, your, you went on and founded the Hudson Institute, and because of your connection to Frederick, you know very well, in some ways you know us better than probably we know ourselves, for those of us who came later. And you've seen us grow and change and evolve, but in many ways we are the same, right? And I, I'm curious about what you think, if fielding were a person, what advice would you give them? What advice would you give us as we look towards our 50th anniversary and beyond? What a great question. I, you know, I took some notes on <clears throat> some of the things that, that people said and, and the, that comment about a counterculture ethos, I, I particularly, that stood out for me is, isn't that amazing that there has been this counterculture ethos in, uh, in the culture at Fielding all of these years. And, and it, it made me think about uh, someone in Frederick's life who he talked about often uh, from his days at Union Theological, which was Reinhold Niebuhr. And, and Niebuhr used to talk, uh, at least in Frederick's words, about making good trouble making good trouble. And, and so I, I think if Fielding were a person, I would say, uh, keep on making good trouble and, and maintaining that counterculture ethos. Y you know, in, in the, as I think about uh, your work at Fielding, the, the work we do in, in the organization I, I lead, adult learning, uh, is uh, is the connective tissue that that makes it possible for us to make a difference in this world. It's in our interpersonal relationships. Someone talked about the mystique lives on. The mystique lives in all of us, and and uh, I think that that the ability to to really. Uh, uh, step into a learning environment that challenges us, that asks us to see things from different perspectives, uh, that allows us, as someone left in the chat, they said, you know, when I, I didn't just find my voice, this, this institution changed my life. And of course it is us, it is everyone in an institution that helps us change our lives. But I think that the wor work of fielding uh, has has never been more important than it is today. And I, I'm just uh, so impressed when I look at some of the things that, that you have developed over all of these years and grown into. Uh, I think that uh, I know that both Frederick and Halleck would, would be uh, very impressed by uh, what the institution has, has become and I know will continue to be. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. And thank you for reminding us of some of Frederick's uh, early thinking, how, how his thinking derived from a lot of the, the learning that he undertook with others and very philosophical and very much about the connection between learning, knowledge, and wisdom. That there's a really interesting circle in that. I'm curious, so sometimes I think they'd be amazed that Fielding has continued in such a strong way. Um, and I, I often wonder, what, what would they think about Fielding <laughs> at this, in these times? Because these are very different times. And yet, back to what Provost Snowden said at the beginning, these are also, in some ways, they're enduring, you know, the same same social issues, the, the uh, racial issues, the political yeah. context. It's not that things have 
uh, we've we've entered some halcyon period, right? We can we as a society we grow, we we go forward, we regress, we move forward, and it's a it's an interesting thing to think about. What is what kind of learning environment do we set in such a such a society? In some ways, though, when when uh, uh, fielding began, I wasn't there right right as it began, but I know that Frederick uh, spent. Uh, uh, a good deal of time in uh, in another uh, difficult period in our history and uh, and an opening in our history, and 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 so and, and I think the same is true for Halleck. So I I do think that that Fielding was at least in part born out of uh, a hope for for a new a new poss new possibilities a new time. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. You know, it's. Um, I, I was thinking this morning as I was uh, getting ready to join all of you that that one of the things that that uh, I think was a, a gift of Frederick's and, and I, I think of, of Halleck's as well is the ability to have a wild and crazy vision. You know, it's just just a vision that 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 <clears throat> many others said <clears throat> you cannot do this. You cannot. <laughs> this will not happen. Right. And and uh, you know that's a that's a remarkable, bold, courageous thing uh, to uh, to breathe life into uh, against all odds. And and uh, I, I think about in in Frederick's life, you know, in retrospect. So he's been he's been gone for six years, and and there's this thing that happens. Uh, I think for most of us, when someone is no longer here is that we see their life differently. And, and we start to piece together parts of the puzzle that weren't as clear for us when we were in the moment in, in uh, one another's lives, excuse me. And, and one of those, I think for him was surviving polio. And I, I think that to survive polio in the days when there was no vaccine, uh, took some visioning, and may maybe that's the roots of of uh, his ability to do that. Uh, but I, I think that uh, the ability for all of us at this time to envision something that is more than, is better than, is fairer than, uh, uh, is more humane than, is uh, so essential right now. And and to to imagine that for 47 years, this institution has continued to move forward uh, uh, in, in this way to, to flourish, uh, to, to help uh, the world of education understand that adult learners are uh, able to learn in ways that are so vastly different than, than in our traditional institutions. And, and uh, make a difference in our world. Oh, thank you for saying that. You know, that's really inspiring, the idea that it's hard to know, as you say, you put the pieces together often as, as you go in your life and you yourself have been reflecting on, on who Frederick was since his passing, particularly, right? You start, you start seeing things in new ways um, as, as you yourself go on. And this idea about um, the imagination and what it takes for the imagination to that that how how one works from one's imagination and how it is that life of the mind builds into the habits of the mind builds into what does it mean to challenge ourselves as learners and to be open and vulnerable to that learning but also because that's what allows us all to develop into ourselves right so it's that connection between the imagination the habits that we develop, but also the use of, of self, right? The the instrument. Yeah, the use and, of and self I I, that, I think the other I think the other role that building plays is then we need people who are uh, standing beside us, who who are cheering us on, who are going, yes, you can, yes, try that. Uh, uh, so I I think that's an important element uh, that is that helps us breathe life into a, a wild and crazy vision, whatever that might be for any of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, 
And then it's not just about that. It's that it's that wild and crazy vision. I like that. And I think you can see on the chat a lot of a lot of people are, are resonating with that. But it's also about bringing others along, right? It's inspiring and attracting people to that to that same vision. So there is there is an element of timing. You know, you think about the the seventies, the moment, the um, the the need, the interest, maybe even the hunger for a particular um, demographic at the time who really wanted to reach out and learn in new ways. So there was a timing that allowed for the expression and the vision to really take root. And here we are today, the intellectual descendants of that imagination, that vision, and, and the, the, the roots of that are still with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I, I like what you're saying, and I, I think about, uh, uh, I, I knew some of the very early faculty uh, uh, who were so, I mean, many of them had lived in traditional settings, and the time was such that it seemed that everyone was ready to try something new. And it took courage for, for everyone uh, to step out of the uh, uh, step out of line and and try something new. And uh, you know, someone uh, you were speaking of a former board member uh, who uh, said that the person didn't know that she was their faculty advisor. Uh, they thought she was just their person. <laughs> I, I think that that quality uh, is such an important one. That the 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 old hierarchical ways of, of learning uh, uh, when they dissolve into person to person, something, something is possible that wasn't before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's right, that there's, there's more of an opening, there's a change and a shift. And, and we have to remind ourselves that we're not the only place now that embodies this, which is, is in itself a, a reminder that this was a very successful idea. This was a very important and powerful idea that others have taken on since. And I think about so many of our early graduates who've, who have gone on to recreate these learning environments in the sphere that they're in, and particularly those that are in higher education. And that's exciting. I mean, that shows, I think, a, a health and a demonstration of, of how important this, our kind of learning is in this world. It's, it's that connection to content mastery, but furthermore, it's the relational, the transformative aspects. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you, Pam. I just so appreciate you yes. being here and staying with us. Right. Uh, as we said, we're still, we're about halfway through our 47 minutes. <laughs> and I just want to appreciate all of you on the chat. Keep the conversation going. This is terrific. Uh, the names of, of our of people who are fielding early uh, please put them in the chat, uh, memories, stories, testimonials, um, please join in on the conversation. I'm now going to turn the part of, this part of the program over to Provost Snowden. Provost? Before introducing um, our student presenter, I'd like to first of all thank you, Pam, um, for your comments and, and sharing um, just pieces of of history and that um, has moved forward into our current and hopefully our future as we think about where fielding has been, where it is now and where it will go. I want to say, um, you know, our faculty, um, always trying to bring our faculty into the room because they play such a critical role in the lives of our students and the alum who have come to the building. And for those of us who are staff and administrators who revel at the things that they do um, and working collaboratively with our students to bring about change in our world. Um, this, this notion of the, this countercultural ethos, it makes me think about right now some of the conversations that are going on um, amongst faculty um, as they talk about where are we at currently in our world, where is Fielding situated in that, and what do we need to do to continue to embrace that counter um, notion that, um, that was so important in the founding of Fielding. I think as we look at what's happening today in current higher education, we know that there's a proliferation of online, online education. And we struggle in the midst of this because Fielding was not founded as an online institution, but in distributed education and actually trying to define ourselves in the current context of which higher education is being discussed. 
I think it's really important that we continue to lean into the humanist aspect of learning and what it means to be an adult learner and come to this education, not as an empty vessel, but as someone who has a lot to contribute, not only to your own learning, but to the learning of others. And I think our faculty do an excellent job of this, but I know that we are up for a big challenge in the, in the years to come because there are those who would like for us to return to this space where we weren't thinking about the humanist aspects of education. And I think our faculty are trying to grapple with this and think about how can they play their part in this time in Fielding's history to position us to be that countercultural institution that we were founded as being. And I think that today that means that we have to push back on some of the things that individuals would have us believe that scalable education, tens of thousands of those who are engaging in a program is where we need to go. It, it means something to be smaller, but still having a large impact um, in this world. And I think that that's what our faculty are grappling with. And I look forward to seeing what they do with our students and we call upon our alum to help us in this activity because you know exactly what the value of a fielding education has meant to you and your life and to those whom you have touched. And so I just wanna call upon you, our alum and our students and those who are friends to say, we have a big challenge ahead of us. If there's a reckoning, um, a coming, and I think the fielding is up for it, but we need to call upon all of our fielding. Let's just say, I say the fielding angels out there to come in and help us with this work because it is so important to not only to our institution's future, but to the lives of those who we try to touch. So on that, I would like to welcome and uh, introduce you to one of those wonderful individuals um, in our space. It is my pleasure to introduce Lisa Revere, a first generation doctoral student in Fielding's Organization Development and Change Program, who is concentrating on media, technology, and information in her studies. Located in the San Francisco Bay Area of California, Lisa is an education consultant, researcher, and technologist specializing in student success. She contributes to the Fielding community as a member of the President's Advisory Inclusion Council, HOD Student Governance, in San Francisco Bay Area and beyond Cluster Lead. With respect to scholarship, Lisa is a recent recipient of the award-winning team for best poster and research for the winter session in 2021 for the School of Leadership Studies. And she's presenting these findings at national and international conferences. Please welcome Lisa Rivera. Thank you for your introduction, Provost Snowden, and for our wonderful enlightening conversation before. Um, greetings and welcome to everyone uh, across the globe that's joining today in the morning, evening, and afternoon. I appreciate your, and valuing your support and the opportunity to share with you what I value most about the fielding learning community. And in approaching the question, I thought where to begin. There, there's so much to value and to appreciate and that I'm truly grateful for and growing as a scholar practitioner in such a, an enriching environment and diversity and inclusion and equity in terms of not only culturally, but diversity of perspectives and having the opportunity to engage with so many um, individuals with unique expertise in areas of focuses, learning from and with all of you as faculty, staff, and students. And touching upon the ideas of holistic learning uh, from the humanistic approach to education and cultivating social change is really what I truly valued and resonated with in, in coming to fielding and really feeling, feeling welcomed in um, bringing our full selves into the classroom towards the lifelong learning journey and becoming a PhD uh, which is really meaningful um, to me and, and also into um, collaborating and engaging with students to create that environment where the sense of belonging is also felt um, towards their learning. And so in, in approaching this question, I actually was interested in looking at the definition of community. And according to the Oxford Dictionary, the community is defined as a group of people in the same place with a particular characteristic in common or um, practicing common ownership collectively with social values and responsibilities designed to serve a particular area uh, with common interests. And so I definitely think that that uh, defines fielding as a whole with our interests as scholar practitioners, as leaders and learners, and truly honored uh, with the privilege to share uh, that experience with all of you and to be guided by uh, faculty, staff, and students um, who are truly inspiring each day. Um, and so 
uh, as a member, member of the Inclusion Council, we were talking about what it means in terms of a sense of belonging overall recently. And as a scholar practitioner, uh, looking into some of our experiences with the cluster, um, just holding a, an event on AI ethics with individuals on the call from national laboratories from Asia and Norway, um, actually inspired to become a consultant by one of our fielding classmates who invited me to work and collaborate on a project with her and was able later to serve on her committee as a student reader. From many experiences, um, including in our KAs, where we were invited to share with us uh, who is the most influential person in our life throughout differing age ranges in our development and time period. And so that really invited a reflection on uh, leadership and love of learning and what it brings to our profession and our scholarship. And so really appreciating those opportunities for those deep conversations and reflection is what I value at fielding as well as that continued growth towards becoming a, a scholar practitioner committed to change and uh, success for students. And overall, especially with our paradigm shifters cohort and uh, from our birthday cards to our encouraging messages that we send to one another, the sharing of resources as leaders and advocates has also made this experience definitely um, unique and exciting as well and supporting one another in our, our final oral reviews and also having the opportunity with our research team to present at International Leadership Association and uh, Society for Applied Anthropology, all those amazing opportunities to continue to develop. And so, and continuing our dialogue um, and, and being featured in, in the Focus Magazine as a cohort and collectively what we believe as a part of our community that is most valued at fielding, I wanted to also have the opportunity to invite you to share what you value most about fielding as well where I'll put a link in the chat and you're more than welcome to add those words and you can participate on your phone, tablet or computer. And so I can add that in now and you're more than welcome to see participate and I will share my screen with the results in just a little bit and it will create a word cloud of our thoughts about valuing the fielding community. And so just in closing overall, there are many experiences and, and amazing opportunities that are valued throughout my development at fielding and continuously approaching the, uh, the dissertation process um, from overall collaborating with planning for, for session to helping to guide students in the new student orientation along with faculty. Um, I really truly appreciate being a part of that opportunity to engage with one another um, across programs and finding meaning and valuing um, the moments that allow us to share that knowledge with one another. And so in closing, uh, in reflecting on our theme overall about celebrating our past and looking forward to the future, uh, I really uh, reminded me of the quote uh, from a playwright, Luis Valdez, about how our true sense of self is mirrored by how much we value other human beings. And in connecting to our future and transformative aspects of learning and humanistic aspects of learning, uh, inviting us to look at and, and reflect upon our in interactions and engage with the communities and what we value towards our growth as scholar practitioners and leaders. So thank you all for the opportunity to share today and happy birthday to Fielding and happy anniversary and appreciating all of your continuous support. And in closing, I can share our slide on what you value about fielding overall. Let's see here. I'm going to, let's see. There are many responses. And just a few of them that are excellence, social justice, community, intellectual challenges, becoming, connection, empathy, learner centeredness. So thank you all for sharing and you're more than welcome to continue adding those into the chat and our word bubble as we transition back into the, the end of our call today. So thank you for your time and the opportunity to share. Thank you, Lisa. That's truly excellent. I really appreciated your remarks and, and I appreciated your point about, you know, as we are 
we are measured by how we connect with others and the humanity in all of us, right? And seeing the humanity in all of us. And I appreciate that because of the importance of the humanistic qualities of learning at Fielding in particular, we're trying to carry on that idea and that aspiration. And I love, of course, the word art. I always appreciate seeing what, what are we right now in this call, in this moment? What are we thinking about what we value at Fielding? I just want to turn it back over to the provost if you had any other comments. No, the comments I'm just uh, this morning just appreciating um, so much about um, Fielding. I think that when I came here in 2009, I thought that I was coming to Fielding to impart all this, um, let's just say, professional knowledge around enrollment management and things. And what I came to understand in my 13th year at Fielding is that there was a lot of me work that, that I was going to do here at Fielding. Um, working on me. Um, and I think that, you know, having been at two institutions prior to coming to building, one a large public research institution, another one elite midsize. Um, I think that in many ways, there's a, there's a somewhat devaluing of what um, a, a small institution like Fielding and the impact that it has. I came to Fielding um, on transitive trust. I had never heard of the institution. Um, but I was talking to some friends and um, I had an interview uh, set up at Fielding. And so they, I said, well, I won't be here, uh, you know, during this weekend because I was going to be uh, out here on the West Coast. And she said, what's going on? I said, I have an interview. Um, she says, we're at. And I actually said, um, oh, you've, you've never heard of it. <laughs> right. And she, she was someone who was very familiar with higher education. And so um, she said, well, where, you know, like I was like, she said, are you embarrassed? Are you ashamed? I said, no, I just figured you never heard of it. And she said, well, just try me. I said, uh, Fielding Graduate University. She says, oh, Fielding. I know about Fielding. And so I said, you do? And she says, yeah. She says, D graduated from Fielding. And I said, D who? She says, our friend D. So I had a friend who actually got her doctorate degree um, from Fielding and did not know it, right? And in that moment, because of her, because of that conversation, I trusted that Fielding was a good place and one that was familiar with those who were in my tribe. So I came to Fielding a little prouder, shoulders back, head up, thinking that this was going to be a wonderful opportunity to learn about an institution that I knew nothing about. And when I met Anna Stefano, I was a believer. Right. I was a believer. Anna, sitting there with Anna, you know, I wanted to be a part of this thing that she was talking about. And I would say this about Fielding. It has not disappointed. It has been challenging. It has stretched me. Muscles that I didn't know I had. It continues to do that every day. And I think for those students who come to us during those new student orientations, when they experience our faculty for that first time, some of them are uncertain, still uncertain about what they're about to get themselves into. But after that new student orientation, many of them take a calm. They know they're in the right place, that they found individuals whom they can have impactful conversations with. It is the conversations that I've had with people in fielding over the years that are most meaningful to me because they've opened up my mind and they've touched my heart. This is a place that inspires. This is a place that rejuvenates one spirit, even when you didn't know that you weren't quite where you needed to be. And I think that that's the wonderful thing about fielding. It, it basically awakens something in you and you can't return to where you've been, you know? And so I wish that I could go back in time and see that first group of students right? See, their, see them when they came in and then see them when they exited out. I like to close. Most recently, I was speaking with one of our staff who is now a student in the doctoral program in HOD. And he participated in the new student orientation. And as a staff person, um, he's experienced fielding from this certain positionality. And what he shared with me about his experience 
in the new student orientation continues to inspire me to think about the work that I need to do and the ways that I can contribute to institutions. He said these words to me. He said, the faculty were like it was their first time. He was, he was like, it was like the first time they had done a new student orientation. They were so excited. They were taking in each of these students' background and experience. He said that he thought that when he would go into this experience, he would see some, let's just say some of that professional fatigue that we, that we sometimes have. And he was, he was very surprised that he felt like he was a part of the first group of students coming into field. And I want us to think about that and hold on to that because that's what we try to do. We are here for those new students in a way that helps them feel like they're the first students that come in and they will be the first students graduating, right? And I think that it's that type of re refreshing um, experience that keeps me motivated. It says that when I'm tired, when I feel like that I can't give another thing, there's another group of students about to come in here and they deserve the best of what we have to offer. So I wanna thank each of you for the roles in which you play here at Fielding as alum, as students, as staff, as faculty, trustees, friends, and remembering that those three founders back in 1974 envisioned something that people, as Pam shared with us, thought was crazy, impossible. And here we are, right, 47 years later, still standing. And not only was it possible then, but there's things that are even more possible if we just unite ourselves and keep that very innovative spirit that our founders injected into this place and that we get to appreciate and experience every day. So thank you all for your time this morning or evening, afternoon. I know we're in all different places. So I wanna just thank you. Thank you, President Rogers for creating this space here today for us all to do some reflection and some envisioning. Well, thank you all. Thank you, Provost Snowden. Those are beautiful words, particularly about your early, you know, your early beginnings here. You know, what brings us to fielding and what, what keeps us here too. Are, are these values, are the things that empower us and the things that connect our hearts and our minds to our learning. I wanna thank you, Pam, for being with us today. I just so appreciate it. Uh, I know that you know these are deep memories for you and, and we're really honored by your presence. And I can see by the chat how many people are, are delighted uh, to have you with us. And Lisa, as always, you inspire. I really enjoy um, kind of come, having come to know you a little bit with your service on Fielding's Inclusion Council and just how much I appreciate what you bring into the room each time. Uh, we have an engagement together. And thank you all of you on the chat and all of the stories and the, the comments and the sharing. And, and this is it. This is our 47th anniversary celebration slash birthday to all to Fielding Graduate University. Uh, may we all be gathered together uh, next year, our 49th and then our 50th. And just know that we continue onward. And thank you all again for being here today. And we'll now conclude this meeting. Happy birthday, everyone. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>